paper okay. review and then that's good that's a good to make <laughs> make a paper and then mm. I did the best paper mama daddy proud of me whenever I'm starting the live show I always imagine that for a few people it's the first time they've ever seen me <laughs> or experienced <laughs> my channel or anything like that so that always it's, makes me it's the very kind of scared a little scared <laughs> <laughs> oh, worried. <laughs> it's all right though. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think we're. It looks like we're live. We're streaming. Everything's good. So, uh, hello everyone and welcome. This is Awesome Hardware. Uh, it's a live show. We stream it every Tuesday evening at 5:30 p.m. Pacific time to Twitch.tv/slash Awesome Hardware, which is our shared Twitch channel, and we also stream it uh, to our YouTube channel. So, mm -hmm. the first half of today's show, which is episode number 136, we've already streamed to Kyle's channel. Bitwit. It's linked in the video description, so if you didn't watch that, you can go ahead and check it out. We've been drinking a few beers, and we've been talking about technology, and we're going to continue doing that for another hour or so now on my half of the show here on Pulse Hardware. Woo! It's going to be great. Uh, a quick word of warning to any of you guys uh, who are, have young children or that kind of thing. We occasionally use adult language here on the show. We speak freely and openly, uh, and of course there's some, uh, some beverages imbibed and whatnot. We encourage you to do so as well if you are doing so responsibly, of course, and are you're of, of, of age and all that kind of things. Uh, all right, I think I think we're doing okay so far. Uh, I'm going to do a quick plug here, as we usually do for our stores. If you want to help support us and get yourself some cool merchandise, uh, very high quality stuff, check out PaulsHardware.net. You can uh, buy stuff from my store there. If you buy stuff during the show, we'll shout Johnson and your name at you. At the end of the show, <clears throat> it's a fascinating ritual, which I don't completely understand myself, but <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> we keep doing it. We do it anyway. Nevertheless. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kyle's store is bitwit.tech slash store. He also has high quality goods. All comes from the same location, and uh, it's, all, it's all good stuff. So if you buy stuff, thank you for helping to support us. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. All right. Buy stuff. Now, do it. I quickly need to address something, and by quickly I mean like super quickly, because mm. I don't want to talk about this too much. Okay. But um, I haven't really posted any videos this week, and if you follow me on Twitter, I, I tweeted a couple things early, earlier this week about um, having kind of a rough time, and I promised to share a little bit more today on the live show. Uh, I'm not going to go into any crazy details or anything like this, because this is pretty personal and everything, and... As I already mentioned, we've been doing some drinking and whatnot, so I don't want to say anything. Anyway. Yeah. Um, Understandable. All right. So I am married, and my wife and I, as married yeah. people uh, often do, have been trying to have a kid. Uh, and actually, we were successful in, um, in, in the creation of a of a kid uh, several months back and we had just gotten to the point where we were starting to share it with people when at the beginning of January uh, we got some really bad news unfortunately our child had a uh, condition uh, which was terminal and not survivable so um, as of this past week um, we're, n we're no longer pregnant and uh, the little girl we were expecting to arrive in uh, this summer is no longer going to be arriving. So um, we've been really, really sad, and it's been very challenging, and probably some of the most difficult things uh, just to deal with that, that I've ever gone through. So, um, oh, shit. So I've, uh, I, haven't, I haven't done much content production, and... Um, I don't think anyone would blame you at and, this point. And my wife and I have, have, have done a lot of crying and everything, but... Um, we fortunately we have a, a really uh, good group of friends and family who have been really supportive for us, and so that's been really cool and very helpful. But um, I just wanted to, I guess, tell you guys if if I haven't been myself or if I haven't been uh, doing stuff the way I usually do, that's that's the reason behind it. So anyway, <clears throat> all that well, said, shit, man. I'm yeah, no, I, I'm impressed I that to, you're like here doing this show right well, now. I, honestly, I, like you, you guys have shown some tremendous strength. Well, all things considered, uh, with C, everything C, happening and C, stuff. So. C, C, CES was rough to to get through and everything, but um, yeah. 
so yeah, thanks to all you guys uh, who have um, been tweeting us. Like I said earlier this week, when I tweeted um, pretty pretty vaguely and and stuff, um, there's just so many people who said so many wonderful positive things for us. So thank you guys for all of that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, all right. Now that I've said that, uh, let's let's move Whew. on to the show proper and uh, talk about some tech news and let's that kind of thing. So. Let's start off second half as we usually do with tech news. Tech news. Yay. That's, for tech news. As good as we had <clears throat> There's not a whole lot of it going on actually right now. Main, most of the tech news right now is hey, graphics cards are really expensive and memory is really expensive and it sucks. Uh, but Red, who makes cameras, uh, has been Swing developing games. a smartphone and we've kind of talked about it a little bit here on the show so so far but uh earlier this week they came out with a bunch more news about the hydrogen one which is their smartphone uh which also has a holographic display um and actually they opened up pre-orders for this last year um probably back when we first talked about it in july so mm-hmm. People have been pre-ordering this for twelve hundred dollars um, since July, and I don't know how many pre-orders they have going on or whatever. But more details now. Nice. It's got a Snapdragon eight thirty five X SOC, a system on chip processor. There were I read a couple things that said it might be a customized one, but um, nothing very clear about that. Uh, it's got a dual SIM configuration, which I think is kind of cool. You can either have two SIM cards, so two phone numbers, or two Mm -hmm. different carriers, that kind of thing. Or one of them's, I I don't know if one or both of them is a hybrid slot, so you could have one Mm. as a SIM card and one as a micro SD card, so micro SD expansion, which is always super, uh, super nice. It's not like a proprietary red micro SD card that costs you $500, is it? Not as far as I know. Okay. I know the red storage (laughs) devices for their cameras can be very expensive, so I hope that's, I, I wouldn't expect them... I don't think they can call it micro SD and have proprietary that's stuff true. going on I hope in not. there, but hopefully that's not the case. Yep. Uh, 4,500 milliamp hour battery. That's so, pretty good. Um, yeah, uh, should hopefully have really good battery life. Uh, the weight is listed mm-hmm. as two ounces heavier than a typical 5.7 inch device, which is sort of vague and nonspecific. <laughs> but what's a typical uh, 5.7 inch device? Are a large, it off of the a large, you know. Like, iPhone Plus, yeah, the, 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 the big screen cell phones, basically. Okay, um, it's you're gonna expect it to be a little bit heavier than that, and that's because it's supposed to be more sturdy and, is this, and more. Is this also a 5.7 inch device? Yes, it okay. is. It is a 5.7 inch okay. screen, so got it. That would that would fall in line with that. Okay, uh, it does have a headphone jack. Props for that. Yeah, I don't know sure. how much longer we're gonna be able to tell people, hey, good, they put. A, Headphone jack. Yeah. Uh, multi-channel spatial surround through stereo speakers or headphones. Uh, the display is a 1440p resolution and holographic 4V. That's what they're calling the actual display what name. What does that mean, holographic display? 2D and 4V. It means that when you look at the display from above, it can do simulated three-dimensional <coughs> hologram. I... I I wonder what that looks like. I haven't like. seen it myself, so it's hard for me to say specifically how what it looks like or if it's useful at all or anything yeah. like that. But you can supposedly use the camera to shoot 4V content, front and rear, uh, without an add-on module or anything like that, uh, via, just via the built-in front and rear cameras. Um, mm-hmm. They're talking about unprecedented carrier support, so that hopefully means that they have um, already worked out deals with multiple carriers mm-hmm. to be able to get it with a uh, you know with a two year with a, a contract plan or something like that. That's often yeah. a very useful way to get a really nice phone for um, not having to pay a big upfront cost if you're planning on sticking with your carrier year for a couple years anyway. Um, probably going to have demos of the phone in April, and launch is coming sometime in the summer. So, again, not nice. specific, but summer launch. But probably in April we'll see at least MKBHD. Yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll Austin Evans and, and uh, maybe other John from too. TLD, yeah. those guys will be um, <clears throat> doing so some content on those. We'll see more of, well. of the Hydrogen 1. I have not pre-ordered. I, no, I'm still super happy with my Pixel 2. I don't get enough uh, views on my cell, on any of cell phone videos I've ever done to, to warrant pre-ordering <laughs> something like that. But That's true. 
Mm. Oh, us in the in the PC in the PC DIY space. Yeah, <laughs> for the odd night out when it comes to mobile. Uh, next up, Amazon Go is now a thing. It has debuted up in Seattle at least. Okay. Um, Ars Technica, ARS Technica has an article on it. We talked about this before. Amazon Go is basically the idea of a store, a brick and mortar store that you physically go into with Amazon app on your phone and you walk in, you're recognized via the app, you buy, take whatever stuff you want and you walk out and it's, it knows what you took and it bills you to a pre-set up uh, card that you have attached to your account or that kind of thing. Sure. Um, Why not? The premise of the story is all is all based around cameras watching you all the time. I actually saw this store in Seattle. Um, I saw a tweet of it with a big old line out front, but hopefully that was short lived because it seems not to m- not make much sense to have a big line in front of a store that's entirely based around not waiting in line for anything. <laughs> but uh, there it is, <clears throat> up in Seattle. Uh, it's got a crazy camera system going on overhead with uh, hundreds of cameras that like watch you the whole time. Uh, this is the system that, that where you walk in through and basically scans you or scans your app. Um, ID's you no longer stuff. need a Prime account for this store. Hmm. Uh, all you have to have is the Amazon Go app, so a smartphone basically with, with the app on it. Um, and there's a turnstile that reads a barcode from the app when you walk in, and then the cameras track you the whole time and watch hmm. what you do and see what, what products you take wow. and put into your bags, little orange bags provided by Amazon to walk around with and do your shopping. And I don't know why all these pictures look like they were taken very hastily. Yeah. <laughs> this is the view looking up, though, and here's where you can see all the different arrays of sensors and cameras and everything like that, which is the thing that seems like both... The unique and innovative thing about the store, but also the thing where you're like, you really? Totally get screwed up. Like, all of this technology is making this store somehow more profitable than a store that just has people who check, yeah. check you out and make sure that you buy stuff or whatever. I mean, over time, um, I, would, I, would, I, guess, I guess, yeah, if it's functional and, and all. And it doesn't need troubleshooting um, done every hour on the hour yeah they do sell beer wine and, and liquor um there is a physical person i guess back in check the, your id in, the, in that area of the store that will check your id and whatever and um the author of this article sam uh, match match sam match tried his very best to trick this system to fool it to steal basically from amazon ah. uh he almost got away with some yogurt apparently okay how did he... But that was mainly because he figured out that if you <clears throat> need to return something, you basically just tell the app, I don't like this thing, and it's like, all right, okay. It just and accepts you, it. Yeah, because you don't really need to return it. It just, I think it just refunds you or whatever. Oh. Um, so who knows if that type of thing will be taken advantage of. But he tried, well, to, he tried to trick it by like take, picking up a thing and looking at the label and putting it back or picking up multiple things and swapping them around in his hands and all that kind of thing. Wasn't able to fool their system, though, uh, uh, according to what he said. Hmm. Um, probably largely due to the fact that everything is sort of positioned in its own little aisle with, its, with separated separation between things so it knows what you've taken and what you're putting back and everything like that. Um, but look, even batteries and... Feminine hygiene products. Good, good times. Someone's gonna um, find a way to cheat this. Yeah, someone will. Um, but yeah, no I'll, time you just you pick up the stuff you want, walk out, and then in about fifteen minutes you'll get an email with uh, your receipt, and it will charge whatever payments method you have attached to your Amazon account or the Amazon Go app. So you don't have to actually scan any any items that you check out with? You no, just you literally just, put them in your bag and walk yeah, out? Yeah, you just pick things up and walk out. So the <laughs> camera... Because when, when, you, when you first go in the store and scan yourself in, it starts tracking you as an entity. Right. And whatever you take, it associates with you as your entity, and that ent- your, you as an ent- entity is associated with that account. And it knows what you've taken... You. Solely based on the cameras that are above you. Yeah, cameras and sensors, and I don't, I, like, I don't know everything as far as what they have arrayed. Like, I don't know if there's sensors in the actual food dispenser parts of it, or if right. it's all just cameras and everything going on overhead. I wonder if it um, face IDs you, 
somehow. From what I've from from the way the article describes it, no, it doesn't. Hmm. All it has to do is figure out that you're a person, and then it's it can do enough tracking of people moving around the store to figure out who you are and that you're the same person as you're moving from place to place. Right. And then it's just a matter of tracking the products that you pick up. Hmm. I wonder if the, all those products are on a sensor of some sort. Like even like, you know, a bottle of Tabasco is on like some little sensor so that it knows I feel that. like they can you do that. Tabasco. If you go to a hotel, they can they can have like a little box they have that, that yeah. t- detects if you pick up a bag of M&Ms or whatever. Right. Like that. Wonder, I feel like yeah, that that's Amazon I mean. should have access to that technology as well. Yeah. Most I'm just likely. wondering if that's what they're using or if they're using something more like sophisticated. I'm not sure. I feel like there's probably stuff that they don't want to tell people because obviously that's a way to cheat. People it, are going to try to take advantage of it when, yeah. when they know it's that's autonomous. That's pretty fascinating though. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is about autonomous systems though. It's like, oh, that system's autonomous. I'm going to try to cheat and scam it as much as I possibly can. Right. Versus a person, it's like, can you imagine having that mentality with a person like, oh, there's a person standing there trying to prevent stealing. <laughs> Let's see Let's everything see I can do to try to, to, try to trick them <laughs> yeah, right. and steal from them. Machines what at is, this yeah, point what, are like less intimidating a, than actual people. Yeah, but that may soon change. But there's a definite. <laughs> but, there, there's a different when the robots can like come out and approach you and like stun gun you to death. Yeah, then maybe the tables will turn. But hey, if you want to steal from Amazon, then maybe you'll feel more justified at least if you pay their monthly Prime membership because they've just jacked up the price <gasps> two dollars. <gasps> Three. Uh, no, two. Yeah. Yes. Eleven to thirteen. The monthly wow. Prime membership is going from ten ninety nine a month to twelve ninety nine a month. Eighteen percent increase. Wow. You're right. Might only seem like two dollars to you, but crazy different when you consider it to be an eighteen percent increase. Wow. Or an extra twenty four dollars per year. Although it wouldn't make much sense to suddenly pay twenty four dollars. What was it? Thirteen dollars times twelve. What is that? It's a number. It's 144 plus 12. It's 156. It's 156 dollars. Okay, sure. Why would you pay 156 dollars a year when you could pay 99 dollars a year for the standard yearly Amazon Prime membership, which has not changed? Is still 99 dollars a year for that. Hmm. Um, really, what this is all about is uh, apparently there is a subset of people who sign up for Amazon Prime like maybe a couple times a year. Like sign up for it for a month for ten ninety nine yeah. and order like all the stuff shit. that you're gonna order for that third of the year or half year or whatever. Shipping. Get free shipping on it cancel all. Cancel it. Then cancel it. Hmm. And then Amazon has paid eleven dollars for, you know, twenty, thirty, forty, a hundred dollars worth of shipping or whatever, yeah. so obviously they lose money. So right. this is them looking at their business model and saying, All right, we can increase this price a bit. It's going to affect this smaller subset of people who a smaller subset of them is taking advantage of this. Yeah. And it's their way to fire back a little bit. Will mitigate them, their ability to take advantage of it and make up some of the money in the meantime. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, For most people who pay yearly, proceed. 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 Continue paying yearly. Yeah. Yeah. It's the best way to go. Um, All right. Moving on. Moving on. YouTube. Moving is uh, change the rules. They're changing up the rules, and uh, this is a bit of a response to the adpocalypse thing that was going on. Um, but they're basically they're tightening up the rules when it comes to smaller channels and when it comes to people who want to be involved with the YouTube Partner Program. YouTube Partner Pro- Program is what allows you to monetize your videos to have YouTube feed ads at the beginning so that you can make money off of the content that you produce. Mm-hmm. And um, YouTube calls these changes tough but necessary. Um, this is YouTube sort of... Thanks, Logan Paul. Yeah. This is this is, this is all Logan Paul's this fault. This is YouTube attempting to navigate the waters between what they have been in the past 10 years developing themselves as the premier online upload and streaming video content platform to what they want to be, which is a very profitable video streaming platform online. And in order to be profitable with their business model, you need to have advertisers. And in order to have the really good advertisers who pay lots of money, you need to make sure that they're advertising on content that is advertiser friendly. So enter the YouTube adpocalypse and them flagging a lot of channels as 
you know, we're not sure if you're legit, if you if your content is controversial or not. So you have limited ads. Um, this is all them attempting to create processes that are um, autonomous enough that they can have minimal human interaction and still somehow moderate the vast amount of content that is uploaded to YouTube every second of every single day, which some of which they want to monetize and feed ads in front of, uh, which is a good idea for them to be able to make money. Yeah. Now, all that said, um, previously you needed 10,000 total views. That's, that was what you needed in order to get into the uh, YouTube Partner Program, um, which maybe is a lot, maybe is a little, depending on whether or not you've had a video that took off. Um, now you need to also have 1,000 subscribers <clears throat> and <clears throat> 4,000 hours of view time over the past year. So, again, this is either a very challenging thing to achieve or something that happened fairly quickly depending on whether or not you... Because you can have a video, <clears throat> a single video, that gets enough views that it starts to get s s into the suggested feed that hits these uh, requirements in a day. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can have other people who upload videos consistently every week or maybe a couple times a week but you know they just don't have that video that takes off mm -hmm. or they don't have uh, I, I don't i don't know what it, exactly with that certain je ne sais quoi that the video needs in order to get the views and everything like that so yeah. um the rules uh currently are going to apply to people who are trying mm -hmm. to get in but they're also going to start applying these rules to current partners on february 20th so that means no matter if, the size of those partners, right? <clears throat> exactly. So <clears throat> even if you joined the YouTube Partner platform four or five years ago, <clears throat> based on your uh, content upload and <clears throat> number of views and everything at the time, if you are not currently and still getting enough views, uh, that being uh, 10,000 total views, 1,000 subscribers, 4,000 hours of view time over the past year, then you might be removed from the partner program as well. And yeah. I've definitely seen some tweets from some people who this affects in a pretty crappy way. Uh, that being people who create content that's maybe informational, but in a more niche type of area mm -hmm. uh, and that type of thing. Very helpful, but not necessarily something that lots of people are going to be viewing. Right. Uh, and I, I know that's kind of vague, but... Um, uh, Pup, Pup Shepherd, one of our longtime viewers, was saying that his channel is getting shut down. Yeah, because he only meets the he doesn't meet the four thousand watch time hours annual uh, in order to to keep his channel sustained. He only makes you know gets about twenty five hundred hours, which isn't too far off, um, you know. And he has six hundred or so subscribers, but <clears throat> YouTube's completely just canning his channel because he doesn't meet these new very new requirements. Yeah, that I mean I remember before like you could you could have posted two videos. With like a hundred views each, and like YouTube would give you the option to monetize them. YouTube is all about it. Like, yeah, anyone, anyone, literally anyone can monetize their videos. Um, and now there's they're trying to please the advertisers. Advertisers are getting pissed. How could you give this guy who has five subscribers, who's you know spewing racial slurs or whatever, uh, any any of our airtime? And so, you know, what one a few bad apples ruins it for the bunch. A um, bunch of terrible, terrible creators who are making shit content that is not advertising friendly are not respectful for the terms of service really um basically are ruining it for the rest of us that's just how it is and uh it sucks because there are a lot of channels out there who are trying their hardest trying their best who are trying to meet these numbers in a really legal and fine way that just you know maybe they need that extra year or so to to really break these numbers but they're getting cut off now because, um, you know, it's tough but necessary. <clears throat> now, according to what I've read, there probably isn't much of a chance that somebody is, who is... There's probably nobody who is completely reliant upon YouTube for all of their income who's suddenly getting that cut off. Because the cut off that they're making this at right now, the level of viewership and everything is roughly equivalent to about $100 a year when it comes to revenue mm -hmm. from YouTube. So what this is doing is it's making it more challenging for people 
who have re- who are just getting started to get started more quickly because mm-hmm. you got to kind of claw your way into the partner program and get yourself a following and everything and it's more challenging to do that of course if you're not making money any money off of it and <clears throat> it's very difficult for smaller or more niche channels who maybe post infrequently <clears throat> or whatever but who enjoy the bit of extra income that comes along with that you know, a little bit of a kickback for the time and effort that you put into <clears throat> creating content on YouTube is very nice to have and might help people get more equipment or anything like that. Yeah. So definitely uh, is challenging for some people. If you're link- looking at this from Google's perspective, they're looking at a situation where they have a absolutely insane amount of video content uploaded to their platform every single second of every single day. They are attempting to parse this, to take the uh, bulk of it that is not monetizable and separate that from the content that is monetizable to make the monetizable content a prettier package to be able to sell to advertisers who want to pay more money, but who want to make sure that their content is only being placed on videos that they find appropriate. So it's a balancing act. And... This is the decision that they've made for now. We'll keep an eye on it and, you know, maybe maybe bring you guys some more feedback <clears throat> in a few weeks if we've heard from anyone who's been severely affected by this. Um, for now, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm hoping this does is uh, take some channels that we watch that we know get, that we know are well over this threshold. I'm going to point out, like, Hardware Unbox, for example, mm-hmm. who have been struggling with limited YouTube ad mo- uh, limited advertisements on a lot of their videos yeah. might now have more resources devoted to them to clearing their videos yeah. because there's a lot less video Noise. submitted to the manual yeah. approval process. Right. So maybe that is a positive upshot from this. Yeah. Hopefully. That's true. YouTube um, might just be sort of investing in the partners who are a little bit more established <clears> instead <throat> of watering it down because they're trying to cater to literally everyone who's uploading it home video yeah so um there's also <clears throat> apparently a uh something called google preferred videos which is uh, right. something that we need to get more of ourselves <laughs> uh if your video is good enough to be a google preferred video which i assume means it hits a certain threshold of views or probably heat uh when it comes to views per engagement. minute or, or engagement yeah. per hour, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Or if you just have a channel that consistently gets lots of views on all your videos, that kind of thing. I right. imagine the, the algorithm the, the has all these view, factors. Views. goes into the Google Preferred Video Program. These videos are manually cu- curated, uh, and the ads running on these videos are only running on videos that have been verified to meet our ad-friendly guidelines. So this is like Google's premium program, for like content that they're going to curate themselves, they're going to watch and make sure that there's no Logan Paul dead bodies or anything like that in them. Yeah. And as a result, they're going to be able to sell these to advertisers and say like, "Look, you're going to pay more for this advertising package, but you're going to get you know all these views on these really good videos and mm-hmm. all these really good." This videos. is solid, real primetime yeah. content. All this that. is the real deal content, yeah. which is good for the creators in a sense because if you can get onto Google Preferred, you'll probably be making more per view. Oh yeah, I, absolutely. I have to talk to Austin or I bet Austin gets in the Google preferred. Name. Oh yeah, I'm sure all those guys do. Anyway, I'm not. Je- I'm not jealous. I'm not jealous at all. Google stupid, preferred. Stupid, dumb. Stupid, it's just a, just a name. Bullshit club. Also, though, uh, and I, actually, one of the things I thought was uh, one of the more useful ideas uh, is they're in- introducing a new three-tier suitability system. So whereas right now, I guess you kind of have three tiers because you have no monetization, limited ads, <clears throat> or you're good. Cool. Now they're having a three-tier suitability system, which probably means like you're good, you're good for everything. You're like maybe you're okay. Feels like a PG-13 rating or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Right. Like maybe here, <clears throat> maybe in here, you're not quite as family friendly. But hey, it's kind of risque, so I bet these videos are getting lots of views. Right. Right, that kind of thing. Versus, like, the full-on, like, no, this is, you know, dead bodies and, and pornography, and, yeah. like, nobody's going to want to advertise on that at all. Pure trash. That seems a little bit more sensible to me as well. Right. Okay. 
I'd probably be in the PG-13 area. Yeah, I mean, and that's fine. And that's <laughs> this fine. show would probably be in the PG-13 That's what they need, because there's, cause there's not, advertisers who, like, I don't care about the kids. I'm not, I don't, I'm not, you know. It's not our target audience. You're yeah, not buying whatever. our product. You're I just buy want, a mattress. I just want the views, and I got the money to spend, so, yeah. so there we go. So that, that seems a little bit more sensible to me. Right. Okay, uh, let's talk about some actual hardware, although it's very brief and very not normally. Uh, it's, a, it's a micro SD card. Yay! Look at that. 512 gig. 512 gig Hot micro SD card. Damn, why? Uh, significant in that it is a record breaking full half terabyte of storage Whew! in this tiny little micro SD card Holy slot. Holy moly. Size of your pinky nail. Uh, this is uh, usurping the previous record holder for capacity in a micro SD card, which was hold, held by SanDisk's uh, now crappy and terrible 400 gig uh, micro SD. Obviously, 512 gigs way better. <laughs> Sandisk's did hit 100 megabytes per second read, though this one does 80 megabytes per second read, so mm. not quite as fast. Uh, it's classified as an SDXC UHS I U1 card, uh, which means it has a minimum write speed of 10 megabytes per second, which is my most disappointing factor of this. Yeah. 10 megabytes per second is not that great. 4K. Is gonna be mostly okay with 10 megabytes per second, but not 100% okay depending on the format that you're writing it to, and whether it's lossless or how much lossiness is going on with it, uh, as well as the bitrate and that kind of thing. Should be able to handle full HD off of most video cameras, but uh, would be more exciting if it was 512 gig as well as just a bit faster of a write speed to make yeah. sure that uh, when you're dealing with really, really. Do we know what the write speed is of the SanDisk? Uh, no, I don't. Not positive. I didn't put that in my notes here. I'd be interested to see what that is. But uh, if it's a U1 card, then that's minimum 10 megabytes per second. Mm -hmm. That's just in order to meet the standard. Yeah. Uh, this does meet the V10 standard for video transfer rates designed to capture full HD video office cameras. No price, unfortunately. I'm guessing $400. Yeah. Uh, launches in February. February... Everyone go out and buy them. Uh, buy, five, multiple, buy five. Multiple ones. We'll buy five of them. All right. Oh, wait, a new segment. New, new segment. Segment. Where to go? Now watch. Now watch. Are you done this watch. one before? Yeah. I sorry. I'm, I'm, next, next segment. segment. Yes. Uh, now watch. We're gonna talk really briefly about a couple stories net watch, net watch, in the net neutrality net watch, net watch, variety. Net watch, net watch. Uh, we've talked about net neutrality a lot because we think it's important. Um, back mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. December, net neutrality was done away with by the currently current FCC, but uh, some states are fighting back. Montana has become the first state to implement net neutrality by themselves as a state <clears throat> after the FCC repeal. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Montana governor, Steve Bullock, Bullock. Uh, signed an executive order on Monday requiring internet service providers with state contracts to abide by net neutrality principles. According to Bullock, this is a simple step states can take to preserve and protect net neutrality. We can't wait for folks in Washington, D.C. to come to their senses and reinstate these rules. Yeah. And indeed, if you talk about uh, polls across the U.S. and most people... Most people uh, like net neutrality, want net neutrality, want it to be a thing, want it to be a thing that we at least have some guarantee of, some enforcement of. Um, the FCC was able to enforce it for quite some time, or at least since about 2015. Prior to that, it was enforced by light touch uh, regulatory framework, but um, then internet service providers started pushing back against that and actually doing stuff that was outside of that, causing the FCC to have to take legal action causing the internet service providers to counter sue the FCC, which is what led to the FCC in 2015 saying, all right, we're just going to classify you guys as uh, Title, II. Title II common carriers rather than Title I, which is what they had been before, which gave the FCC the authority to enforce net neutrality. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was all fine and dandy for a couple of years until Ajit Pai and the current FCC decided no, We'd rather apparently do what all of the internet service providers want to do and what is in their best interest rather than in the interest of most people and roll that back. Anyway, that was a brief history of uh, the net neutrality stuff over the past couple of years. But <clears throat> good on you, Montana, for going ahead with this because it is something that the states can take action on themselves. Granted, something that was at the federal level would be better 
but <clears throat> maybe that will come around as well. Uh, here's a second article from ARS Technica about 21 states suing the FCC to restore net neutrality rules. Nice. Uh, that's Mignon Clyburn. She is it's almost half the nation. Uh, half the, yeah, well, 21 states in the District of Columbia. Uh oh. I guess depend. I'm <clears throat> sure half the nation. That's right, Kyle. <laughs> sounds sounds better when you say it that way. Anyway, she is one of the five FCC commissioners. Uh, her and Jessica Rosenworcel are the two Democratic. FCC commissioners. It mm. is required by law, by the way, that the FCC be split uh, and not have more than a 3-2 majority by any party. Mm. So uh, it was required for there to be two out of the five commissioners be Democrat versus mm -hmm. Republican. And as we talk about Democrat versus Republican stuff, and lots of people might uh, be more aligned with one side or the other, uh, it's natural to hear something that might be against your party and to feel negative towards that uh we're not trying to make this a political discussion or whatever it just happens to be falling that way when it comes to how the opposite sides are voting we just have very strong feelings about net neutrality when it comes to technology and how we feel the internet should work and in this case it happens to be that the democratic side appears to be the ones who are pulling for uh the rules and the configuration that we feel would be most appropriate yeah so that's why we're talking yeah, it's about not that. personal. We're like, if we are, like, we're not speaking out or like hating on Republicans. We're speaking out and 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 putting a, a magnifying glass on the people who don't support net neutrality. Just the Republicans just, who don't support net neutrality. It just <laughs> it just so happens that a lot of the people who don't support net neutrality are Republicans. So this isn't really like we're attacking Republicans on the first. Note, this is a transitive property thing, where it's like, we are speaking out against people who are against net neutrality. Most of the people who are against net neutrality are in the Republican Party. So, that it's it's nothing personal, it's just that it is what it is type of thing. Um, there you go. So, uh, 21 states in the District of Columbia. The states who are suing the FCC are New York, California, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Illinois, Iowa... Kentucky, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Mississippi, New Mexico, North Carolina, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Vermont, Virginia, and Washington. And uh, it just so happens that every U.S. state with a Democratic attorney general happens to be every state who's suing the FCC. In this case, the Republican state attorneys general did not feel that they should join in this particular petition for whatever reasons they might have. Uh, the states filed a protective petition for review, which essentially reserves them a spot in court challenges against the FCC. So there's, of course, ongoing challenges to the FCC's decision when it comes to that neutrality. We will continue talking about it on this show because we think it's important. And that is all for NetWatch for this week. All Good right. NetWatch. Let's move on to the final structured segment of today's show, which is going to be Sword Fight. Sword Fight. Sword Fight, the classic long-time segment where Kyle and I argue about something. And in this case, we're going to argue about video games <sighs> and violence. <sighs> violent video games. Double. Because you know what? <sighs> Have you ever been told that you play in your violent video games and that it's going to make you be violent as well? Of course. Apparently that's not yeah. true. We're going to end up killing everyone with a samurai sword, Kyle. That's not true, at least school. according to the researchers at the University of York. They're they dumb. They have found no evidence. No, there's... Oh, oh they're, they're supporting it. They have found no evidence. They're smart. No evidence to support the theory that video games make players more violent. Thank God. Uh, they did a series of experiments with more than 3,000 participants. Uh, they studied stuff such as reaction time realism and then specifically looked at combat games of course the uh, study is ongoing they discussed the need for further work to further distinguish uh, more variables get more data points when it comes to researching this but as has been stated many times before someone who is predisposed to violence will be violent it, anyway will be violent uh, with or without video games with or without video games them. and as is, is evidenced here, uh, the video games may be a conduit for certain people 
who have a predisposition, <clears throat> but playing violent video games does not make you violent. No, of course not. There are no consequences in video games, which is what makes it so such an unconvincing argument that it perpetuates violence in real life. Because when you commit a violent act in real life, whether you're a, an adult or a kid, there are consequences. There are immediate repercussions for what you did. Oh, you punched little Timmy in the face? Well, now you get a timeout and you get suspended from school. Your parents <laughs> are pissed at you. You punch some dude in the face in GTA Five. nothing happens to you. You realize, even as a young adult or a young child, that it, there's a huge difference there. You don't necessarily think, well, because I crushed over five cars and 30 people in this tank rolling down, you know, Los Santos Avenue, that I can do that in, in real life and mom and dad won't be mad at me. Um, there's a huge disconnect there, fortunately, between video games and IRL that... Uh, I think people are just always constantly looking for someone to blame or something to blame. And video violent video games is an easy... I mean, there's there's violence in... American culture has violence everywhere. We're one of the few cultures that actually have, like, super ultra-violent films and TV... Even our, our TV shows on basic cable that don't really have any, like, age gate or anything are extremely violent compared to most other countries out there. Where they, they're like, fuck no, let's ban that shit. Because violence it really exists in a real sense overseas, in other countries, where they, they don't want to perpetuate that. But it's like video games is like the smallest threat, if anything. It's weird, the straw poll links apparently aren't working properly in YouTube. But sorry about that. Cell, Cell made a bit.ly link. Thank you, Cell, for that. He's on it. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> so since, since it has been so clearly decided now that um, video games don't cause violence, we should obviously binge on video game violence, and so that's what we're going to argue about is what type hmm. of video game violence should we binge on now that we know it doesn't affect us, because there's so many options, mm. so many options mm. in the video game world. We got your fantasy-based violence, you know, orcs versus humans and elves and you know you, and warlocks and Avada, Avada Kedavra and, and all that stuff uh, you got your horror based yeah. violence you know your uh, your Resident Evil your Silent Hill you know your, there's some paranormal some activity monster created by some thing and it's scary and the monster's gonna come violently decapitate you or whatever mm -hmm. uh, your war base your shooter base violence uh, Battlefield you know your Call Battlefield, Duty. Battlefield Call of Duty you're, you know your player nuns battlegrounds yep fall into this category here of course yep uh, beat em up violence is, is very generic but um, this like is two player like yeah. side scrolling type uh uh, like yeah, Tekken, your Street Fighters, Street Fighter. um, that kind of thing. Also, maybe like uh, your Smash your Smash Brothers. Uh, is, <laughs> Incredibly, is, is very well. Incredibly I saw violent. you tweeting yesterday, the day before. Oh you were yeah, watching some. Wifey Sauce and I were up all night just like watching that intensely, like, watching oh, so... Smash Brothers tournaments. So entertaining. And then of course the violent and, and text violent. text based games. Yeah, those are which, the worst. those are um, obviously leaving um, it up to the imagination. What type of video game is, is is what would, um, I'm going to say the most violent out of all these, oddly enough, is violent text-based games. Text-based games. I feel like that violent text-based games are the most gnarly because it's just text. So your brain, your imagination fills in the blanks of how that text should look and, and play on paper, which by far and away, I feel like your imagination as a just the normal effed up human beings that we are are generally worse than the reality of oh, yeah. of any of these video games any, anything that these video games can portray uh, realistically your, your brain has far more horrendous images to, to conjure up so I think the violent text ba test, text based games are, are pretty gnarly I'm gonna go with that one that's what See, I'd like I, to I would on. I would probably like uh, like a fundamental level agree with you there and I probably would have gone with the same choice but since I have to choose something different, I would say I'm going to say war shooter based violence, and this is primarily based on me trying to win, and the idea that the most popular games right now is like your yeah. player, player unknowns battlegrounds, Gee. and uh, also mm -hmm. just you know your battlefields is oh yeah consummate but popular dom it's dominating popular um, you know FPS games and that right. kind of thing. I mean, like fantasy based so, violence isn't even violent. It's like it doesn't we're all feel still like a happy. It, it doesn't feel it's like fantasy. It, but... It's like oh, I gave you an evil potion, and I now remember... you walk slower. Where was it? Violence. 
Where where was it that I saw? There was some I don't know. It was, a, it was a website or something like that. Lightning and bolt. it was talking about the number of deaths in movies, and like Lord of the Rings was like, like just yeah, yeah, just like everyone else is like here, 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 and there's like Lord of the Rings is like <laughs> just so because like you consider right. these it's massive mass battles war. and it's like yeah. orcs and people's just a bunch of people's yeah. dying. But then you oh. walk out of the film, you walk out of the movie, going, just what a lovely film. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's, you don't imagine it's, it's all like that. It's like they weren't even real people. Because it's fantasy. It's fantasy. Totally doesn't fine. seem quite as real. It gets a pass. So. It gets a pass in the violent card. Yeah, I, I guess. Anyway, um, Warren Shooter is like real life people, you know, faceless names. You're talking about war and actual events. Like a lot of these video games are based on actual wars that happen. Battlefield One. Um, so yeah, it's a bit more raw, and, uh, and they can't make the deaths quite face. as gratuitous because true. It's histor It's it's based on history, mm -hmm. right? Okay, I feel you. All right, let's see what people thought. Check out the results here. Oh, oh Warren here Shooter. Here go. Looks like I win. Wow, fan and follow by fantasy. Tech Space I'll be uh, did pretty good there, though. You got, you got, yeah. third, you got third there. Yeah. Nine of fantasy there. I tried. Almost 20% of the votes. Thank you for all you guys who voted. Yep. If you're watching this in the future, you can still go and vote. It you can. No it one, won't matter no much. One, no one will ever go and view the straw poll again. Though. No, definitely not. Probably, don't let that stop you. Probably won't mean anything. Don't let that stop you. Okay. Uh, all right, so hey, hey, that's all for the uh, prepared content from my half. Let's quickly run through sweet donations. Some... Yes, some Let's donations. See. Where do mine stop and yours begin? That's a good question. I remember you asking uh, this one. Ah ha ha! Right? Ah ha ha! MB with MB sixty seven. Yes. After or did Matt? No, Kyle's half. Oh wait, what, what? Why am I? Why am I after you? It's, it's after labeled, these ones. Cat, no, oh, did he Cell, swap them? Cell just confused he us. He, Cell confused us. He confused which one of us was Paul and which one was Kyle. Very, oh, okay. So it is. It is where it starts off th on Kyle's half. I think so. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. Joseph Tischer. Tischer. Five dollar donation. Mother Wait Tischer. for GPU prices to drop or next gen GPUs upgraded from an i5 760 to a 7700K, but still on a GTX 970. Do 4K. Keep up the good work. Ah, uh, gosh. If you want 4K, I mean, hold out for now. Your 970 is functional. Um, <clears throat> price drop. Next gen GPUs might come at the exact same time. Stock coming back in. Like yeah. it's really just a matter of. Like if you really need something right now, you should sign up for uh, website auto uh, auto notifications, like from Newegg mm. and Amazon and wherever else might have that kind of function, because that's really going to be your best bet is getting some inventory right when it drops on a retail yeah. site for MSRP. For now, hopefully, in another month or two, things will ease up a little bit, but yeah. it's hard for us to predict too far out. But Indeed. but good luck to you, Joe. Uh, automatic Matt, five dollar donation. Hey guys, scored a Zotac GTX 1080 Mini for six hundred dollars. So I'll have a micro ATX build to submit for next week for pet my PC. Nice. Also, Paul, build HTPC. I will, <laughs> Matt. I will the HTPC. The 1080 I, Mini I, though I, for six hundred is like not terrible compared to what we've been seeing. The I know. I feel so for. torn, being like, wow, that's only. It's like that's a lot for a mini. It's but only hundred dollars more than it should have cost. Yeah. So that's good. That's bittersweet, right? Kind of. But <sighs> yes, no. But I'm sure it's going to be a, a very nice card for you, and, and definitely not crazy overpriced. So there you go. True. Uh, MB67, Mr. Lenticular, uh, with a thirteen dollars and thirty-seven cent donation. Paul, I hope that all goes well for you and your family. Cheers. Thank you very much for that, uh, and and I, I hope the same for myself. Mm -hmm. I, myself. Guido Salducci. Uh, Guido. Douchey. Douchey. Uh, Five dollars. I love you both equally. I'm going to eat the twenty-five dollars to see if the power link will work. Okay. Worried about blocking the two four-pin fan adapters on the back, though. Uh, if it's the wraparound one and you've got the fan adapters that stick out, it probably will. Um, just knowing where the power link goes. But those fan adapters aren't really necessary. They allow you to connect up extra fans that operate at the same fan speed as like the fans on the GPU. Are you talking about the fan pins on the fan headers <clears throat> on the on the card? 
Yeah, the card itself has a couple fan headers. This is an Asus? This is an Asus card. Okay, okay. It's a, it's a specific Asus feature. Gotcha. Um, I'm a, yeah, I know. I but you don't need to use now. those fan headers, so... No. Yeah. Uh, but but give it a shot. See if it works. I, I hope it works for you, Guido. Bazinga X, $10. You remind me of Howard and Raj. Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. Only question is, who is Howard and who is Raj, or are one of you Stuart? I'd probably be Raj because I'm the ethnic one. <laughs> yeah, right. I have the darker skin. Yeah. I'm the Raj. I have the accent. Okay. You can do the accent. Okay. Better. He's yeah, clearly yeah, Howard accents. in this situation. Um, he is the, the typical white man. And I'm offending all the Indian people of, of my culture right now. <laughs> I apologize. It's a, pretty, it's a pretty good accent. So maybe they'd be like, oh. There were a lot of Indian people in my high school. Uh, I picked up on it quickly. <laughs> I tried to be them. I never fit in. Juju Bees, thirteen dollars and thirty-seven cents. Again, magic number. Think quick. Not with that comment. We yes. don't really have to because you weren't really Think testing quick. us on right. anything. Done. Scott Dilbeck, six dollars and sixty-six cents. I have one Strix RX five eighty for my living room PC and crossfired Strix RX four eighties in my room PC. Should I be selling those for profit? If you <sighs> need the money, you, I mean, you could. You could. To me, for me, it depends, depends on, like, can you get by with those computers without the graphics cards? Like, if your living room PC... Yeah. If you never play games on your living room PC and it's got a 580, then yeah, sell it. <laughs> yeah. Like, if it's still got an iGPU or something that you can use to keep it functional, then you'll make a lot of money on that card right now, and chances are in three, four, five months, hopefully when prices have settled <laughs> down, if that happens, yeah, you can buy something else that's better, but... Yeah. That's assuming price is settled down. Yeah. 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 Uh, Bazinga. Bazinga X, $50. Please get some flowers on me for your wife. So sorry to hear what happened. Thank you. Uh, we shall. I will buy her flowers. That's, that's some good amount of flowers right there. That is. That should be nice. Serpent XSF for the 10 bucks. Haven't been able to donate or watch lately. Hope you guys have been doing good. Kyle, did you get my little poster for your blank office wall? No, I have not because I haven't checked my mailbox in so long. It's yeah, been like it's been like three. Box. It's been like two, three months since I checked it. It's really months? bad. Yeah, it's oh, probably God. overflowing. Like they probably hate me at the we post office right now. We can try to go next week, maybe. I'm definitely gonna go like tomorrow. Send it needs us to stuff happen. to our PO boxes. Yes. this week so that next week we can we can. Yeah, do next them week on the we'll show. have like an epic mail time segment. Fourth, mine is PO box four three two five Diamond Bar California nine one seven six five. Mine's nineteen forty nine La Mirada California nine zero six three seven. Okay. Yeah, you might want to double check the description just to make sure I got <laughs> that right. Um, Stephen Hill for Stephen. the ten bucks. What up, Stephen? Was caught up late at work, but wanted to offer whatever emotional support I can. I'm not particularly good at it. I hope you and your wife are alright. Thank you, Stephen. I know how you feel because I'm not good at it either. But um, neither am I. We're doing great. Thank you. Thank you very much for the for the donation and the kind words. Thanks, Stephen. Diane Michelle, five dollars. Say hi to Aaron for me, and and sending Paul and Mrs. Paul to the 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 pink light pink, of love. <laughs> sounds pink, sounds kind of pink light of love. Sounds like a strip bar or something. It does. Welcome right? to the, welcome to the pink welcome light, the light pink of love. Light of love. <laughs> pink light of love. Next up on the dance is Susan. Everyone say hi to Susan. <laughs> right? Right. I, I don't know how the announcer voice at the strip no thank you thank you though I haven't, haven't been to one yet who's this who knows Aaron though say hi to Aaron for me wait are they talking about my Aaron no who else would that be I no don't, I don't know Aaron who the hell's Aaron what Aaron are you talking about There's, Aaron's a very common name I don't think it's necessarily my friend Aaron Diane Michelle I don't know who you are Diane okay. Michelle <laughs> I don't know what Aaron you're talking about but if we see him we'll, we will say hi Matt Grimes, $5. I can't imagine how much pain you must be feeling. The community will always be there for you. We love you, Paul. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. Kind words. It has been, it has been rough, but we are getting through it. Yeah. TV Chow. TV Chow! TV! For the fight, Taro. If I took back all the money that I donated to you guys, I could probably get myself at least one bucket of the Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's cool, though. I support you guys. KFC is pretty delicious. That's, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, it's universal too. In China, they have lots of KFC. In ooh, China. yeah, they have really good KFC in China. Mm. Learn that. KFC is like a big thing there. Everyone eats KFC in China for Christmas. Apparently, yep. when it's Christmas time, that's like their go-to food is KFC. They all dine in at KFC on Christmas. Yep. 
National Holiday. Five dollars from Josh Helberg. Josh Helberg, have a beer on me, Paul. Thank you, Josh. I'm I will sure have a beer will. off of you. That sounds kinky. I mean, either way. Okay. Check with your wife first. Thank you, Josh. Robert Rule, five dollars. Love you guys. Thanks, Robert. We love you, Robert. Appreciate it, man. Dingo on my forty. Five dollars with the Dingo. weird dog emoji looking thing. That's a yeah. That's a dog. I think. Or. A hello, it's, hell a hello, it's a Hello Kitty. What the hell is is Hero doing? He's having a dream. Okay. He was like he's he's shaking his leg. He's dreaming and he thinks he's he's running. So oh, he's like, he's, he's like twitching and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. He looks possessed. He's like. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, like he'll start barking a little bit. In his, mm-hmm. in his in his sleep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and it has to be like, it's here, what are you why are you barking? Shut what up. are you barking at? <laughs> we assume he's protecting us from something. <laughs> he's like rapists. Rapists. Rapists are Rapists are pedophiles, Reggie. Alright. He's good boy. He is good boy. And our last uh donation from Lee Turk. Lee Turk. Five dollars. I have a Ryzen five, seventeen hundred. Incorrect. You have a Ryzen 7 1700. True. And a 6 gigabyte 1060. I just don't know what PCU cooler CP- or CPU. C- also, you meant CPU. They're a cooler, uh, air cooler to go with, or what RAM to help to to get help, guys. And Paul, your I am are your prayer. Paul, you're in my prayers. Is basically I think what he's saying. Thank you, Lee. Um. um all right, an air cooler. To go with the Ryzen 7700. Uh, I mean, eh. Maybe try. Man. Cryo Rig H7. H7. Excuse me, the H7. Yeah. The H7 is a good choice. It's a good choice. Uh, the Cooler Master uh, Master Air 4. Yep. Uh, the Pro 4, Master Air Pro 4. Yeah, that's uh, a good would one. be a good choice for you there. Uh, what, what, what else? Mm. Be Quiet have a. Be Quiet has the Shadow Rock. Shadow the Shadow Rock, Rock uh, the Shadow Rock Slim is a great cooler. Okay. Um, she got the Slim style. That's yeah. That's down, the downward firing air, right? Uh, no, it's actually a tower. Is it a, it's a tower. Okay, it's a yeah. tower. Shadow Rock Slim's a tower. It's, it's a very nice cooler. Um, let's see. Who else makes air tower coolers that are budget? I'm trying to think. Noctua should make one. They do have they do have like a simple tower one that you could look into. Yeah. But I, I don't know what the name is at all. There's, there's a bunch uh, the of NMAX, out there. <clears throat> NMAX ETS T40S. Yeah. Just make sure it's the updated version that has the uh, bracket for, for Ryzen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are all good choices. We'll give you a head start there. Um, I guess we have one, one, more one more here. Diego F for the 100 MX, which I have no idea what currency that is. I'm about to do my first build. What are some tips for first-time builders, and when is it a good time to upgrade my graphics card since I could not get a good one because of the current prices? Um, when's a good time to upgrade your graphics card? When the prices fall down or when you could find a good deal on one? To MX be honest, is, we don't know. is Euro? MXN? Oh, Mexican Peso. Could be Mexican Peso. Mexican Peso? Maybe MX is Mexican Peso? Ah. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Hmm. People are saying peso, which is about hundred hundred MX is like five USD. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's fine. Sounds good. I just I haven't heard of that before. Yeah. But we don't we don't see that one too much, which is surprising because we're we're pretty close to Mexico and stuff. But um, I would say. Yeah, like I said, wait wait for for GPU prices to fall down before you buy one. Honestly. Um, or if you can get one a good deal online or something like that. Um, yeah, but good luck. Good luck on your first build. I hope I hope it all goes well for you. Yeah, it's it's a rough time, honestly. It is rough. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, just focus... Bad time for your first build. Focus on getting some of the core components aside from GPU and memory, and then just keep an eye on GPU and memory prices, and, and hopefully those will come down um, in the next couple months. Uh, oh, we have one one more donation from Ev- Evocative Productions. Productions. $10 says, Paul, you're the man. You and your wife will get through this. Keep trying. Once you succeed, it'll make it that much more meaningful. It will happen. My prayers are with you. Thank you so much uh, for saying that. And I agree. And we will. 
Definitely. You will. You will. We will. Okay. Thank you guys all for your donations. Thank you for all the kind words. Uh, we have a few orders that have come in. I have three Johnsons to distribute. First to Jack from Australia. Oh my gosh. He Jackie got Jack. a couple keycaps going all the way to Australia. Johnson for Jack. Uh, Steven. Steven. Steven Hill with uh, the uh, thumb screw stainless steel bottle opener. Double Johnson to Jobs. Is Steven. <clears throat> Steven. Stay positive shirt. Thank you, thank you Steven. Thank you, Steven. Uh, finally, Dave from New York got the Tri-Blend t-shirt, uh, the thumb screw, of, cor of course. Nice. Actually, that's what I'm wearing right now. That's a beautiful, Classic. beautiful choice. Classic. Uh, that's all for me, too. And, uh, hey, Glorious. thank you guys for joining right. us for the entirety of this stream. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. Thanks, uh, you guys. Do we have a Twitch raid to call out? You know, I'm not sure. I've heard that Cell has been getting inundated with requests for Twitch raids and that he's had to develop some special system. Oh, wait, for... no. Swack sw accelerated. <clears throat> Swack accelerated. So if you guys are watching live and you want to do a raid, go to twitch.tv slash Swack accelerated. S W A C C E L E R A T E D. So S W A C C L R A T E D. And she is playing. She's playing. Fury, uh, she's playing Mech Warrior online at the Mech moment. Warrior. She's a variety <clears> streamer. <throat> um, she does a bunch of different stuff. But right now she's playing Mech Warrior online. Go ahead and raid we the just, crap out of her. I assume she's given Cell a significant amount of money. Or she has like that. 16 viewers <clears throat> right now. All right, 16. Um, let's let's make that. Let's make crap. that a thousand. Raid the crap out. Of her. Let's freaking do it. All right. Blow her we'll mind. Like people. Your chat as well. Thank you guys so yeah. much for watching today. We'll be back very soon with more videos hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this if any of you guys are want, willing to do uh timestamps and want to post those in the description i'll try to grab those and uh pin them as soon as possible too yeah thanks for watching guys